Welcome to Founders of Friends podcast with Scott Orn at Cruise Consulting. Today, my very special guest, Ben Doffner of Vesto. Welcome, Ben. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Great to be on. My pleasure. So maybe you can, I'm excited to talk to you, and I think this is going to be super beneficial for the cruise clients, especially those who have a lot of cash on their balance sheet. We have, I think our clients have raised something like 10 or $11 billion now, and I think $2 billion this year already. So that's a lot of cash that needs to be managed. And that's what you do. Vesto is a cash management company. Maybe you can just kind of retrace your career and tell everyone how you had the idea for Vesto. Totally. Yeah, happy to. Um, yeah, so I've actually been I've been an entrepreneur for, you know, as, as long as I can remember, you know, sort of built my first businesses when I was in school. And, you know, eventually that sort of turned into more serious businesses. Uh, and then eventually, you know, I started a, started a SaaS company a few years back. Uh, you know, it wasn't VC backed, it was bootstrapped. You know, I literally started it with a couple, a couple hundred dollars that I'd sort of saved up more of like a side project almost. And um, it ended up scaling out super quickly. Uh, you know, I think a year or two in, we were you know, doing well above a million dollars a year in revenue. And, you know, we weren't VC backed. So the majority of that was profit. It was like, you know, 90 plus percent profit margins. And so we just had a bunch of cash sitting in a checking account. Uh, it was me and I think I hired a few other contractors and that was like the team for the first two years. Uh, so, you know, we were just sitting on a bunch of cash, which we didn't really know what to do with. Uh, and at the time, uh, you know, this was still in Germany for context. I'm originally from Germany. Uh, you know, at the time we still had negative interest rates in Germany. So we were actually paying our bank uh, 50 basis points, half a percent uh, for each, God. you know, for each euro that was in there, <laughs> which is not fun. Um, and, and then on top of that, you know, we obviously had, a, a, you know, at the time, uh, you know, more, so, you know, more, you know, less, less, you know, crazy inflation, but we still had some inflation, which obviously added on to that. Um, and so, yeah, I was super frustrated by that. So sort of looked into ways we could, you know, optimize our cash balance, optimize our balance sheet. So, you know, reached out to our bank and we're like, hey, is there any like a cash management offering that you have? And, you know, they didn't respond for like a couple of weeks. And then they sort of very arrogantly responded that they wouldn't work yeah. unless we were like this enterprise company. And I think, I think they'd quoted me the minimum deposit size was a hundred million dollars or hundred million euros. Um, and so I was like, oh, that sucks. So I sort of went around and, and shopped for other cash management offerings. And it turns out there weren't really many great offerings out there. A couple of banks so like money market options, but the yields were terrible. And, and you know, like had to completely switch everything over to that bank. And it was like a, a slightly sketchy bank, which no one ever heard of. Uh, you know, there were a couple of banks which were offering their own CD we had like, lock up the money for two years. And so really the solutions were just not good. Uh, you know, the sort of core theme there was, you know, you can really do anything unless you're a big, big company. You could either, you know, build it internally or you could, you know, go to the big banks and say, hey, look, here's $200, $300 million. Um, so yeah, that's sort of planted the idea in my head. And, you know, after a year or two of just being obsessed with that, I, you know, eventually started building Vasto. It, you know, initially, it actually sort of built uh, our own cash management system internally for that old company, uh, which was not a fun process. It was like six months of just boring work with like advisors and custodians and stacks and stacks of paperwork. Um, so yeah, ended up building Vasto from that. And, and uh, yeah, now we're here. And you solved your own problem. You touched on a bunch of really cool stuff there or really interesting things. The first being that you had cash in the bank and you were emailing your bank asking, can you get a better interest rate? I found, I can't tell you how many like hundreds of cruise clients over the last like probably nine months that we've been, that I've been talking to about that. Like you have the, the, that's the, this weird thing in that it's not like automatic. You have to email them and bug them, yeah, get their attention. And guess what? They don't really want to raise your interest rates because that's a direct cost in their business. That's like the biggest cost in their business. Yep. So they like don't usually respond for like the first two times, yep. you know, and then there's, then it's two weeks before they get on the phone with you because they're stretching everything out. And it's like, it's so frustrating. And there are a lot of founders who just kind of give up. They're like, whatever, but they're leaving a lot of money on the table. So it's amazing that you figured this out at your previous company. And then now that you have your, your, you know, your second company, you're actually building a solution for those people. Totally. Yeah. Uh, I think the average checking account rate in the US the last time I checked is like three or four basis points, uh, which is ridiculous when you think about it. Yeah. So the like, rate in care for dear, that's 0.03%, not 3%, 0.03% for folks at home. So, so when you, so Vesto is basically, maybe describe Vesto, how it works and how startup founders can use it. Yeah. So we're a cash treasure management platform for startups. We work with mainly VC backed startups. Uh, we basically just help them 
you know, automate and sort of invest their cash versus letting it sit idle in a checking account, you know, earning, earning 0 .0, uh, you know, 3% a year. And yeah, so we work with those companies. We pretty much just automate the entire labor away, a lot of the manual labor that's involved with sort of setting this up. Uh, and yeah, we invest your cash into extremely low risk investment options, right? We don't do anything crazy exotic with stable coins or, you know, Bitcoin or crypto. Uh, you know, we invest all of the funds generally into one of these asset classes. It'll usually be, you know, U.S. treasuries, uh, corporate bonds, um, money market funds, and finally CDs. Right now, our bread and butter is mainly just U.S. treasuries because the yields are great and it's backed by the U.S. government. Uh, and so we'll oftentimes build sort of treasury ladders um, and sometimes we'll sort of mix and match allocation between treasuries and money markets for added liquidity. Uh, so there's a bunch of things that we do, right? Ultimately, we sort of try to work with companies, not just provide a, you know, one size fits all solution where we say, look, here's a money market fund, here's a CD, go buy it. No matter what your, you know, investment and financial situation looks like. We actually have an investment team. We work with companies, we create a proposal for them uh, instead of just sort of having this almost in a, in a negative sense, a sort of robo advisory experience where we're like, you know, what's your burn rate? What's your, what's your cash balance? All right, here's the perfect solution for you. You know, that could work well for like seed stage companies with a couple hundred thousand dollars in the bank. But once you scale to that later stage, you know, five plus million dollars in the bank, you really want a customized solution um, you know, matching your financial situation. So yeah, that's what we do. I love it. There's a bunch of things you said in there. For If you don't mind, I'll just kind of use it almost like as an agenda because it was amazing. The first was low risk. Yeah. And that's something I talk to our clients about all the time. Like venture capitalists gave you money to build your startup, not to speculate on uh, interest rate derivatives or the stable coin weird conversions and staking all this stuff. Right. right? Like they – you are, yeah. you're kind of, if you're serving startups, your foremost kind of responsibility is keeping it safe, right? Totally. Yeah. I mean, that's what we do, right? We don't, we don't dabble in anything exotic uh, and we fully, you know, we fully agree with that. Like we think we're here to provide you with a better yield and sort of do better than your bank. But at the same time, we're not trying to you know, beat the market and be a crazy hedge fund and, you know, give you 50% returns through some crazy strategy that no one's ever heard of. So, yeah. Yep. There's, there's real ramifications for that. If you're a founder, if you like speculate and lose the money, you are like gonzo, you're going to be fired for sure. And it's actually gonna be really hard to ever do another VC backed company again, yeah. because the venture capitalists are fiduciaries of their investors money, like the yeah. big pension funds, endowments, foundations, they cannot let you lose money that way. The, one of the other things you brought up was like an investment policy or like a document that you help the companies put together. Yeah. That's like, that's the kind of thing that sophisticated VCs are looking for. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Totally. Yeah. It really comes into play once you get to like series C and upwards, right? I mean, you have the sequoias of the world on your cap table and they're giving you $50 million. They're, they're not going to be happy with, Oh, we put it into this like money market account, right? They want to actually know what's going on. Um, so yeah, we oftentimes work with, you know, later stage companies build out a sort of investment policy, uh, or sort of standard investment policy statement, as it's sometimes called, uh, and that just lists out, you know, what you're able to invest in, what you're not able to invest in, you know, who is the person responsible for, you know, checking up on this portfolio, making sure that, that everything's running smoothly, um, you know, things that are completely off boundaries, right? So no investing in crypto or no investing in stable coins, uh, and really just lining everything up. And that's super important once you get to that sort of you know, later stage, uh, so, you know, series C and upwards company. And especially when you have a board on, on the, you know, sort of on the company and you have to go to them for board approval, that's going to be super helpful. So we help companies with all that with sort of somewhat earlier stage companies who don't yet have a, you know, big board and have to go get approval. We'll oftentimes just sort of create an investment proposal for them, which is sort of the sort of one page solution of that policy and just lines up, look, here's what we're going to invest in. Here are the risks, here are the pros and cons, um, things of that matter. And uh, yeah. I totally agree. And I love that you have kind of the one page version of that versus the more extensive, but yeah. And just the one little thing there, like we have tons of companies that are like the Sequoia, Andreessen Horowitz, Menlo, Benchmark, all like those are cruise clients who are putting like 10 or $15 million into these companies at series A. So, you know, series A is not too early to start a series A with like an investment policy discussion with your board. And I am a huge fan of actually getting it ratified by the board it for the it's it's good it's like keeps you out of trouble it's a smart way of, of running your company but actually it will buy you a lot of credibility and goodwill with your board if you're the one bringing that to them and saying hey we did some work we're working with vesto 
They helped us put this together. This does this seem good for you, to you folks? You see a bunch of companies. Can we approve this? That's the kind of thing that like builds a lot of confidence in venture capitalists. So I highly, highly recommend that. Totally. Yeah. It's also a great distribution strategy for us because, you know, VCs will see, oh, these guys are, are doing it the best. So we should have all our other portfolio companies work with them. That is good for you guys. It's like the, uh, it's a customer acquisition strategy. I love it. Yeah. But another thing you talked about was um, treasury ladders. Yeah. Can you, can you kind of give the layman's terms for what a treasury ladder or any kind of bond ladder is? Can you explain that to folks? Yeah, totally. Uh, so it's basically just uh, a sort of ladder, uh, right? So a set of different uh, you know, bonds in our case, you know, treasuries most likely, uh, each maturing at different uh, at different dates. So like quick and dirty loss on bonds, you know, you buy it at a certain date, let's say December 1st, and it matures at a certain date. And that's when you get your principal plus your interest back. So you could have a one month T-bill, one month treasury uh, sort of bill, which matures on December 30th and you buy it on December 1st. Uh, and basically by creating a ladder, you have many different uh, sort of bonds that are all maturing at different times. So we could do a treasury ladder with a one month T-bill, with a two month T-bill, with a three month T-bill. And that allows you to A, get liquidity almost each month or each quarter or each, you know, uh, every other year or half a year, however you want to set it up, we can customize that. Uh, but it basically just allows you to A, get liquidity, which you can then use for operating expenses, or what you could do is you could roll that over into new right now in the current environment, higher yielding bonds, right? So the Fed is, is obviously raising rates at the moment. So if you're putting your money into a five-year T-bill, you risk the, you know, the possibility of locking your money up at, at sort of today's yield. But if you know in two months, the Fed raises rates again, and all of a sudden the yield sort of shoots up, you're missing out on that, that ideal there. So it helps you take advantage of the current you know, sort of rising rate environment, but it also helps you get more liquidity on a sort of you know, uh, monthly or annual or semi-annual basis. Yep. I always tell company our clients to keep two to three months of cash in their operating account because um, you just never know what kind of bumps or surprises, you, you know, liquid cash. Yeah. And then the rest of it can be put into cash management tools or strategies. And what you're talking, this bond ladder you're talking about is like a very, very standard concept. And basically like each, if you say you bought 12 different, like if say you're going to have a bond ladder over 12 months, you just partition your money into 12 different maturity dates, one month, two month, three month. And that way it just rolls off. And then it, as it rolls off, it just adds to your operating account. So you spend a month's worth of cash spent paying your employees and software and all that kind of stuff. And then you have a, that, that cash is replenished by the, 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 the bond that matures that month, right? That's kind of how it's designed to work. Hundred percent. Yeah, we often do that with companies. Other times, what we'll do is we'll have like a longer term bond ladder, and, and you know that could be like seventy percent of the portfolio, and then we have like thirty percent allocation to sort of daily liquidity money market funds, which are designed so that you can buy and sell them every day uh, at sort of at the same price at, at one dollar, um, and, and that allows you to sort of get that out of liquidity there and still sort of reap the rewards of you know longer term bonds with higher yields. I love it, and then. The, the reason maybe just to kind of, again, we're explaining this to, to founders out there who are listening to this podcast who want to help managing their money. Um, you would spread out the maturity dates because interest rates can be different, right? From one month to a 12 month. Like, can you explain how that works? Yeah. So, you know, there's obviously something called sort of duration risk, right? So if you you know, have a very long term bond, uh, you, you sort of risk the risk the chance that um, the sort of the, the, the basically the federal fund rate uh, goes up and therefore you could, you know, a miss out on, on some of your some of the sort of possible yield that you could be getting. Uh, but also if you let's say you have a five year bond, uh, sort of five year bond, just one bond, just one T-bill. Uh, and you, after two years, you realize, oh, I got to sell this because we have this big expense at the company. Uh, then you can actually be losing some of your principal and interest, which obviously is something that, that startups. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sort of really short term, ultra short term bond ladders is really what's typically best for, for, for companies. But obviously, you know, we work with them on a customer by customer basis and see what makes most sense. If you go to sort of later stage, really developed enterprise stage companies, oftentimes they're happy to just, you know, go for the highest yield and take some of those, you know, longer term bets. Um, but generally, um, you know, th those sort of ultra short term bond ladders are, are best for, for sort of early stage startups, what we've seen so far. Yep. Yep. And one of the other points you made when you're describing Vesto is that you're doing this asset allocation or you're doing it automatically. So correct me if I'm wrong, but you're kind of getting rid of this whole 
got to email the bank a couple times and then get a phone like the delays. Yep. Like basically Vesto's entire business is focusing on making sure you're in the right securities that are safe, but that generate a yield. So, th so there's very little kind of work and there's not this like bank dragging their feet on the other side, right? It's just kind of happening with Vesto. Well, yeah, there's a lot of automation, not just on the actual execution front and you know, buying and selling certain positions and optimizing it, but also on the actual sort of reporting layer so that you actually understand what's going on. So if you're a Vesto customer, you'll have access to sort of the Vesto dashboard where you can actually go in, get real-time insights and metrics into your positions uh, in your portfolio, actually understanding what's going on versus it just sort of being this, this black box of, Oh, you know, I put my money with X bank, but I actually have no clue what's going on on a position basis. And so we sort of also are working yep. with cool accounting features to hopefully make, you know, uh, accounts like cruise life easier and sort of, you know, automate a lot of that work as well. So, yeah, I love it. It does make our life easier when it's organized and easy to understand. There was another thing you talked about, which was the first six months of the business. When you started Vesto and got going, you had to do a lot of paperwork and you had to find like an entity to hold all the cash, right? Like, can you talk about that? I forget what it's called, um, because, but yeah. how does, where's the money sit basically? Yeah, totally. Yeah. So we work with a technology partner and also have, you know, sort of through that technology partner, uh, indirectly partner up with uh, the bank of New York, Mellon Pershing, uh, who are sort of our custodian, um, at least for the moment, you know, might eventually change that or you know, go for someone else. But I think they're the, you know, the biggest, uh, the world's largest custodian bank in the world. So they have, I think the last time I checked, it was $47 trillion in assets under custody. So something ridiculous like that to the oh my God, that's and there's a massive institution. So, you know, all your money is actually held there. It's not held with Vesto so that even if we go bankrupt tomorrow and we're out of the picture, your money's in your account held there. Uh, it's obviously SIPC insured. So, uh, you know, you're, you sort of still have that institutional uh, custodian and not just us actually holding the funds. And this also ensures that we actually just can't go into your account and take money out of it, right? So we can't actually ever touch the money in that sense. Uh, we can route it to investments, but we can't just take it and take it from your account, pull it to our account. Um, so yeah, that's something super important. If the custodian is really, really important. I remember in the early days that there was a similar, it's really exciting what you're doing for cash management. There was a similar kind of a um, uh, few companies that that grew up in the with 401ks for startups. Yep. Guideline for us all. Uh, I, I, it's, I think human interest. And that was probably five years ago, six years ago, man, seven years ago now. And the custodian was like a real important linchpin in the evolution of that. Because like you said, you're a startup still. I, I have a lot of confidence in what you're doing. But to, to be able to assure the board of directors that – the money is kept with a very large, uh, impressive custodian is really, really important. So people can kind of get over that hump. They don't have to worry that like, you know, not that you would ever do this, but that Ben's going to go to Florida <laughs> and live off the grid or something like that. Like the money is locked into the custodian. 100%. Yeah. That's really great. And, and we kind of skipped over this, but I think it's worth probably covering what, like you talked about your previous, you know, your previous company years ago, and how there's such a low interest rate or yield, but what's what's driving the interest now in cash manager? Like, can you give the synopsis of our current interest rate environment? And why a lot of startups are thinking about this now? Yeah, I mean, we're in a we're, we're in a really interesting macroeconomic environment where we have you know super high inflation, as sort of most of you are are aware of, right? So, you know, a plus percent inflation currently, and, and at the same time, obviously, the the Federal Reserve in the U.S. is sort of trying to calm down that inflation and their their sort of method for combating that is is raising interest rates raising the federal fund rate um which you know for many years was at zero percent or next to zero percent uh and, and now obviously growing to more like four percent and upwards um it's still changing monthly so i don't want to want to give a number here which will next month be higher but um so yeah therefore you know you can actually earn <laughs> yields on on things like you know U.S. Treasuries, which previously, you know, were earning maybe a percent or half a percent are now earning, you know, upwards of four, four and a half percent. Uh, and, you know, are sort of expected by the market to eventually yield upwards of five percent if, you know, the Fed continues raising rates. So, yeah, we're in a, in a real wow. environment right now to the point where you can buy extremely low risk investment options like the U.S. Treasury, which is backed by the U.S. government, uh, you know, retain a pretty high level of liquidity and nevertheless actually earn a you know, significant yield on that. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's a great time to you know, sort of actually do this. Uh, and, you know, I was reading this, uh, this article the other day, which said that by having, you know, eight plus percent inflation, you're basically losing a month of, of your sort of 
operating runway each each month um, through that inflation. I don't know if the math on that is correct. Maybe it was more of a headline, but uh, you know, uh, yeah. uh, maybe a month, a year, or something like yeah. that. You know, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, right? It's a lot. It's a lot. Is and it's happening to everybody, and even us. Like our our personnel costs have gone way up just because of the price of gas and, you know, food and things like that. Like people need to make more money. So I, we totally feel it too, but you, totally. that's great for you because you're in a, maybe the hottest sector right now and people, everyone's paying attention to this. It's really exciting. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a very sort of now yeah. through, sort of Austin and you know, through Vasto, it's a, it's a very easy thing to set up and you don't have to spend weeks and months working on this and setting this up. Um, so yeah, it's like a, as, as some people say, it's like a no-brainer. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to make that assumption, or or maybe make that advertisement. But uh, yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, I'm excited for you, and I know we're going to be recommending to the cruise clients, and uh, we're actually going to put try it out for cruise cruise money. We're we're bootstrapped, so we have uh, less money than a lot of our clients do. But excited to to use Vesto and try it out. Maybe you can just tell everyone how to find you, how to reach out, and just kind of reiterate the the value prop for Vesto. 100%. Yeah. I mean, so in terms of reaching out, we're, we're getvesto.com, G-E-T-V-E-S-T-O. Uh, and, you know, you can reach out to me at you know, ben at getvesto.com. Uh, and then on our website, you can schedule a demo with our team. But yeah, you know, if you're a VC-backed startup and you're sitting on probably, you know, millions and millions of dollars and, you know, you're probably not going to spend that all within the next six to 12 months, uh, you know, check us out. Maybe it's worth it, you know, um, giving us a try and sort of optimizing your cash balance and earning some higher yields on it. I love it. Ben, pleasure having you. Thanks for educating the audience and super excited about your future. Of course. Me too. It was, it was, great. It was great to be on. All right, buddy. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.